All right, everybody, welcome to the fourth session of Akagi. Uh, really just have one quick announcement, and that is, uh, as you may be able to tell by the Discord overlay, we are down one captain. Uh, we're, of course, still going to play, uh, just, you know, in case you were expecting Mr. Miller's uh, melodious tones. He will be absent today, but he will be back, hopefully, uh, two weeks from now. Uh, what was I going to say also before I had uh, Zines do lock? Ah, yes. So, uh, Nick or Zarya, since they do lovely log keeping, I'm going to let you guys start off with three momentum today. And yeah, Zines, I believe you have a short log, which if not, you know, go for it. Sure thing. Commander's log, start date 39210.3. Commander Kebble Zines reporting. Thankfully, things have been quiet as of late. Besides a routine check-in with the Zarentine colony last week, the Akage has been patrolling an area space near the Cleon border. Thankfully, nothing major has demanded our attention, which is good, because the captain has been down with the Rigelian flu. In his own words, when he told me that the bridge was mine, damn my weak human immune system. Dr. Jensen reports that Captain Miller should be fine within a few days with some rest. I have wished him a speedy recovery and told him I will keep the Akagi more or less in one piece. End log. Very nice. And uh, I thought it would be a cool scene to actually start us off in uh, Zarya's sort of arboretum slash, uh, you know, therapy room. And today, uh, Zarya, you are actually meeting with Mr. Riley as part of your follow-up for the whole uh, incident that transpired uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Riley, of course, you did get that one medal. Um, but I would say, and of course, you you know, it's your character. Feel free to take it as you will. Um, there might be some guilt remaining. There might not be. But this is sort of one of those procedural things where you have to see Zarya uh, before, you know, she feels that you are, quote-unquote, no longer needing therapy kind of a thing. Uh, but I'm, that's your scene, and I'm going to let you guys get to it. So, Commander Riley, it's been some time since the last time we saw each other. Um, how have you felt since then? Uh, well... I felt a few different things. I felt fine. I felt proud. I feel like I, I did a good job saving a, a lot of lives. But, um, I don't know. I feel like there's just something in the pit of my stomach, and I don't know what it is. It's just there. I can't do anything about it. I don't know what it is. It's just there. Do you want to do anything with it right about now? Or do you just want to sit with it for a bit? You know, I'm not sure. There, a lot went on uh, when we were on that ship. Decisions had to be made. There wasn't time to analyze the situation and look at the schematics of the ship and retrace. I've gone over this a few times in my head. Um, there just wasn't time to do it. Someone had to hit the button. And I knew when I, uh, I knew when I took this assignment that, that that could happen. Something like that could happen. I just didn't think it would happen so soon. Riley, are you familiar with the trolley problem? The what? It's, it's an earth philosophical problem where... Somebody is standing at a rail, and there's a trolley coming, and they can't stop the trolley, and it's going to run into five people, and if they flip a switch, it'll run into one person, and they have to decide whether to hit the five people or the one people, one person, rather. So it sounds like what you did is you flipped a switch, and you saved a lot of people. There were 330 people still left on that ship. Once all was said and done. Does that mean that it was necessarily worth the 20 people that lost their lives? Or do you think you can sit with those 
330 people and say that it's okay. I think no matter how much I try to rationalize it, it's always going to eat at me. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it'll influence a future decision. Maybe, uh, maybe it just means I'm human. I don't know. That makes sense. I don't. I guess as humans, we just have to live with this. As, as, as anything, any, any creature that has emotions, sometimes you just have things that happen, and you just have to live with it and move on, and maybe with time. But I'm not broken up. I'm okay, I think. I hope. And on that note, uh, actually, I think this is a perfect time to discuss uh, something that actually came in the Sciences Handbook that came out recently. So, in the Sciences Handbook, they recently made a entire section, eh, well, I call it a section, it's more like four to five pages, but still, uh, about uh, not only ship's counselors, but how to handle trauma, uh, both from a roleplay and a mechanical standpoint. Now, of course, you guys have done lovely on the roleplay standpoint, but I'm curious as to whether you would like to codify it in a mechanics way. Uh, the way it would work is we would have to determine a level of trauma. So, for example, uh, seeing a crewmate being uh, killed due to an exploding plasma conduit would be a 1. And a, uh, let's say, escaping from assimilation from the Borg um, would be a difficulty of 4. And once we set this, uh, this value, uh, Riley would gain the trauma, uh, trauma value, so like trauma 3, trauma 2, whatever, and you would write down the event as well. So you would write down, uh, you know, saved people at cost of others, you know, something so you remember. And the way this works is I can call upon these traits, a sort of like I can with determination, I can say that because you have this trait, there are both ad there's advantages and detrimental sort of you know penalties, but it's something else I could call upon if you were interested in it. So I wanted to offer that if you were interested. Why not? Okay. So the next thing we have to determine then is the quote unquote rating of the trauma. Um, so, obviously, I don't think this is the same as, you know, l witnessing assimilation via the Borg, so definitely not a four. Um, also, uh, you did, you know, inadvertently harm more than one person, so it's not a one. Um, I don't know, sort of a round, sort of a table question. Would people think a two or a three would apply here better? Why not a two? A two? All right. I think a two is fair because so. it's rather detached. Yeah, sure. Cool. Sounds good. So yeah, just uh, underneath your traits on your character sheet, just note trauma dash two, and then write a little uh, blurb that uh, we'll both remember what it means. But yeah, uh, got it. Again, the good news is I can give you reduced difficulty for certain things, but there's also times where you know difficulty could go up. But I think it'll be fun. Okay, uh, next up. Uh, we're going to go to the bridge where, uh, Mr. Zines, you are currently presiding over Beta Shift and all appears to be quiet at the moment. Uh, you've got Ensign Cerul at the helm, uh, Ensign Adler is there beside her, and of course the other chairs are filled with other red shirts who we have not made characters for yet. But, uh, everything is quiet, at least for the first five or ten minutes. And uh, when you, you know, maybe set down your coffee drink or whatever you're drinking, uh, there is a chime over at the communication station. And the, uh, the red shirt that's there uh, slowly turns and says, Uh, sir, do you have a moment? Uh, poor Simpson. Uh, what do you need? Well, it's a, it's a low-priority message coming in, uh, more like a hail. Uh, it is the colonists on Colia, and I will spell that out so you know how to spell it. Uh, they haven't said why they're hailing us, sir, but they do appear to be hailing not only us, but a few other ships in the area. Um, very well, uh... 
go ahead and answer them, Ensign, and ask them if somebody there can would like to speak on uh, speak with us, or, or and then I'll look at um, Adler. Uh, are we the closest ship to this colony? Uh, who plays Adler? I forget. Uh, I believe Adler's mine. Character. Yeah, go for it then. Sure. What should I roll again? Uh, you are going to be rolling in insight and con at a difficulty of one. Actually, gotcha. no. Let's make it a difficulty of zero. It's it's a pretty trivial check, but it could get you momentum, which is what matters, and it does. It gets you two points of momentum. So yeah, uh, Adler. It does appear that the Akagi is the closest to the colony. All right. Um, yeah, Ensign, um, respond back to them and let them know that uh, we are listening and whatever they would like to ask or tell us, um, we are open ears. One moment, sir. And they kind of put their hand to that earpiece that we see on the original series. And they say, uh, sir, they are requesting a open channel. Uh, on screen, Ensign. All right. So appearing on screen is a fairly well muscular and uh, well built gentleman. Uh, human, he does look appear to be human. Uh, he is wearing a uh, a black shirt with gold trim, a little bit fancier than you may have been expecting. Uh, but the man identifies himself very quickly. He says, "Ah, thank you, Akagi, for answering. Uh, I am the governor of Colia Colony. Uh, my name is James Martin. Uh, again, thank you for answering us." Of course, Governor Martin. Um, as always, we are here to help out. Uh, what seems to be the situation? Well, we've detected, or, you know, assuming our what remains of our colony ship uh, sensors are working properly, we've picked up an unknown ship headed towards our general area. Uh, we did try to send out a few hails, but uh, it hasn't responded. Um, is there anything... Uh, else you can uh, tell us about this ship? Uh, unfortunately not. Our sensors aren't as advanced as I imagine yours are. Uh, but I will say, sir, if you're not familiar with the area, uh, we are near the Hiromi Cluster, which, to my knowledge, hasn't really been mapped before. And because the colony is less than five years old, I'm mostly worried that this could be a raid by pirates. Uh... Astute observation, Governor. Um, of course, uh, the Akagi will uh, bring itself about, and um, we'll come in and check out this uh, this ship. I appreciate the support, Akagi. Uh, tell me, uh, Commander, are you a fan of every? Or are you a fan of any certain type of beverage? Hmm. Yes, Governor. But uh, let me. Uh, let myself and the Akagi do our job first, and then we will talk about uh, celebratory drinks. I think that's very fair, and again, thank you for assisting us. Uh, colony out. Uh, instant rule. Um, bring us about, and let's, uh, let's head towards that colony. Uh, let's go to the colony first, and we'll work our way towards whatever our sensors can pick up. Okay. So, uh, while that is going on, we are going to cut to engineering. And, uh, Riley, you are back in engineering, and, uh, you know, you're just reading over, uh, you know, reports, making sure that your crewmen are doing their jobs, when all of a sudden, uh, and I am spending some threat for this, you hear what sounds like a cat yelping. And it's the damnedest thing. Uh, okay. That's not normal in an engine room. Uh, is anyone around me? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a few crewmen. I, uh, I look over at, uh, crewmen in Mendoza. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mendoza, did you... Did you just hear something? Uh, sounded like a cat, sir? Okay... Uh, let's do a, sure some, like a rodent or something didn't somehow 
get onto the Akagi. Okay. Mendoza, you take... Uh, I'm going to put that on you while I uh, continue reading these reports. Let okay. me know what you find. So, uh, you know, Mendoza grabs a tricorder, starts scanning engineering from top to bottom, and, you know, you lose yourself in the reports for a moment, and all of a sudden you realize Mendoza is standing uh, next to you, and he says, uh, sir? Uh, yes, 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 crewman. Uh, can't and you see I'm busy? As you turn to look at Mendoza, you see that he is carrying a monster of a cat. Like, if you've ever seen a Maine Coon before, we're talking, like, medium dog size cat. And it, it's just this big old fluff ball. And he's like, uh, sir, I, I don't know where this came from, but th this is a cat, sir. Uh. Wow. How did a cat that big get into my engine room? Uh, well, the good news, sir, is that I did find a few remains of rats, so apparently it's been, you know, dealing with rodentia. We had rats? Come on, Mendoza. Uh, sorry, We had sir. rats? This, this is news to me I'm, as well. We're going to have to have a team meeting, and this is not, this is not acceptable. This is a brand new design. What the heck, guys? If I and had then, uh, a guess, sir, maybe it came from the colony we just visited? Okay. Uh, who do we contact about a cat? Well, do it, we have any exterminators on board? Uh, just the one I'm holding, sir. <sighs> okay. Do you want to keep it? I I mean, I would be lying, sir, if I didn't have the, uh... I, I, just look at it, sir. It's majestic. It's... Look at its fur. It's luxurious. Yeah, it's cute. But it was in my engine room. And the cat just sort of looks at you and begins purring. It's almost like roll, a, a low rumble of thunder. <laughs> I'm going to have to check with my Starfleet protocol to see if we can keep a cat in an engine room. I mean... Mendoza, make, sure this, make sure this cat is well fed. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, should I manufacture a collar for her? Or, well, I don't know if it's hmm. her. I haven't really looked. Should I take it to Jensen? Yeah, let's, let's make sure this cat doesn't have some sort of disease. Very some pretty. sort of space illness. Uh, I will be back shortly then, sir. And unless you stop him, he turns and goes off to sickbay for uh, Jensen to play veterinarian. No, but I, I don't stop him, but I look to other people in uh, engineering and I'm just, I just stare at them. I open my mouth like I'm going to say something and then just head in hands. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, thought I'd throw you that one little curveball. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll say uh, after, you know, a few hours of time, uh, you actually do arrive uh, in orbit of Colia. Now, Colia is actually very similar to Mars in that it is a borderline class L, almost class M. Uh, there has been a little bit of terraforming going on in the past several years, but nothing to actually make like Mars colony a thing. So most of the enclosures are still sort of airtight. Uh, most of the structures are either ones that were scavenged from the colony ship or ones that they have built themselves. And uh, actually, you know, after a few minutes after you arrive, uh, Cerule kind of turns to you and says, uh, Sir, it seems that other ship is actually showing up at about the same time. Uh, excellent. Um, open a hailing frequency. Okay. So as you uh, open a hailing frequencies, I did have a handout that I wanted to show you all. Show to players. So this is the ship uh, that you see on 
on the view screen. And uh, for those who don't have access to a viewer, uh, the ship that appears in the view screen is fairly small. Uh, it's perhaps only about 150 meters long, maybe about 80 meters wide and 32 meters tall. Uh, if you want a size comparison, it is a little bit smaller than a Nova class. Uh, most of the ship uh, is in this large ring drive that is similar to those used by the Vulcan Science Academy. Uh, instead of the main mass of the ship going through the ring, though, uh, the primary hull starts at the top of the ring and juts forward. And it almost resembles the primary hull anyway. It almost resembles an elongated shower head with this sort of small depression at the forefront. Uh, at the bottom of the ring is what appears to be uh, both impulse engines and a shuttle bay. And uh, with you opening communications, um, the comms officer, who I think we're just going to have to give a name at some point, uh, the comm officer says, uh, Sir, I am confirming that they are receiving and they are transmitting, but uh, the Universal Translator is having a quite a difficult time. Should I play audio? Uh... Sure. Why not, Ensign? All right. So uh, over the bridge speakers, uh, you would hear what it sounds like uh, insect chittering, uh, insect hissing. Uh, almost imagine like a cicada or a, uh, a hissing cockroach. Just general insectoid noises that the Universal Translator doesn't really handle all that well. Hmm. Um... Ensign, try text only. Try sending the normal hail through text. Working, sir? Uh, yes, sir. I am receiving a text message back. Uh, they are saying greetings. Um, relay the message that uh, I am Commander Kevel Zines, uh, Acting Commanding Officer of the USS Akagi of the United Federation of Planets. It's been a while since I had to say that mouthful. Um, and ask them for uh, what reason, politely, they have come so close to one of our colonies. Of course, sir. And they type away for a moment. Uh, sir, uh, they are happy to answer your questions, but they wish to somehow bridge the gap between our two communication systems. Uh, should I call up, uh, Lieutenant Commander Riley and perhaps Lieutenant Commander Zarya? Uh, yes, Ensign, that would actually be a great idea. Uh, I'm sure Commander Zarya has way more experience than I do when it comes to first contact. Uh, please, um... Uh, buzz them to the bridge. All right. So maybe uh, maybe all of three minutes pass, and both Riley and Zarya, you arrive on the bridge. Welcome, commanders. Um, and uh, Zines will point to the uh, to the view screen. Uh, may I introduce to you our new friends? Uh, currently, we cannot. Uh, talk to them through audio communication and only through uh, text-based communication. Um, they would like to try to bridge that gap, um, and obviously so would I. Uh, hence why you're both here, to help me work this problem. Sure, I'm happy to help. Um, there hasn't, uh, hasn't been any cats on the bridge, has there? Like, I mean, little cats, not like... Not like you, Cyril. Uh, not that I'm Never mind. aware of. Never mind, don't ask, don't ask about it, it's fine. Z Zine's antennas do that kind of turned out, quizzical, like, uh, stance, and then he kind of, like, gives a quizzical look to Cyril and Adler. Cyril <laughs> just kind of turns and narrows her eyes and says, I'm gonna let that one go. And then just turns back to her console. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so how much, um, how much data do we have thus far? Like recordings of their language? Uh, well, um, uh, the good ensign, and he'll point to the communication one that we will get a name for shortly, um, has, uh, the initial recordings of their audio message back, 
um, maybe that with the text base um, communication, maybe we can work something out through that. Yeah, the more data that we have to train the universal translator on for their specific language, the better. Tell you what, let's uh, let's name him uh, Ensign Fredrickson, and I will get a token going for him shortly. Um, Sounds good. But uh, just so that we're all on the same page, what are you specifically asking from Fredrickson? Um, Zarya is asking for Fredrickson to request um, linguistic, linguistic data. So like any recordings that they might have that they feel comfortable sharing with us okay. of their language so that we can use that to train our universal translator to hopefully bridge this gap sooner. Okay. All right, so Fredrickson uh, will, of course, send that off, and he'll come back and say, uh, Well, sirs, uh, it appears not to be a problem with their transmitter. Of course, they did provide us the data you asked for, sirs, but uh, long story short, uh, the problem is with their communication uh, device. Apparently, it is calibrated for... A certain species it's it's hard to tell the universal translator is trying to put it into a phonetic and it's just not coming through at the moment i think he cut out there for a sec nope oh, where did i cut out i think it might have been on your side he, yeah i missed a i missed a he chunk said there that it looks like it's just a problem maybe with their language specifically and the sounds that they're using in that. Is I mean, there any way that we could change our universal translator from looking at it from a phonetic standpoint to just a straight pattern recognition? Yeah, you could certainly do that. Uh, there's two ways to go about it. Uh, and as I resize Frederick's token... Uh, so there's a few ways to go about this. Uh, the first is that uh, we do an extended task, which uh, would be easier, uh, or we do sort of a one-shot larger task, but it has a, a larger difficulty uh, attached to it. So it's whichever um. one you guys would prefer to do. Uh, I will say that this is going to be either a a control uh, plus science or a control plus engineering and you can assist each other uh, to answer your question lines uh, no you no longer have any breaches on your ship sweet I just pulled up the ship seat ships sheet uh, in expectation that the ship would help with this task and noticed we still had breaches to weapons Ah, fair. Uh, I would say on that note that the ship could assist you with a either a communications and science or a communications and engineering. Um, okay. Uh, communications and engineering would be the better of the two roles. Um, would advanced sensor suites help in any way? Unfortunately not, um, because Advanced Sensor Suite is specifically when sensors are being used. Gotcha. Okay, if I were to make this um, this role, would my cultural flexibility apply to this? I would say it would, yes. Okay, so you said control plus science? Yep. And before anyone does any rolling, are you going for the, the one-shot harder task or the extended task? Um, I forgot we didn't decide on that. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> I don't think there's any rush to, to get this done, is there? Okay, so let's just go with the extended task. Alrighty. So, and I'll type it out. Wait, so it's, oh, sorry. We couldn't, we couldn't get any sort of inflection on their voice, could we? We couldn't pick up anything like that? No, it is like if someone okay. literally held up a cicada to the microphone, and it, unless you speak cicada, in which case, please tell them to shut up. Let, <laughs> let me just check my uh, my character sheet. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, 
All right, uh, so a very simple extended task. It's just going to be a work track of 12, a magnitude of three, and a default difficulty of three. Um, oh, I forgot to throw in resistance. There is a resistance of one, which means that you basically lose one work uh, every time you do a work. But yeah, okay. uh, this would be a control science if Zarya is leading, a control engineering if Riley is reading. Again, you may assist each other, and the Akagi may assist with a communications and engineering. Okay, I've got the show. I'm and pretty good at control have... engineering. I Do you want me to take the lead? Would you want to take it? Um... My control isn't great, but I also do reduce the difficulty by one for my cultural flexibility. Uh, oh, that sounds a good like a one. good thing. Yeah, that. Yeah, because uh, I would have, I would need three successes. And I have a focus. I would need yeah. four successes, I guess. I would say Zarya should take the lead and Riley assist. And then don't forget, we unless that's wrong, we have five momentum. You do have five momentum. Yeah, we do. And the ship is no help. Can I assist with control engineering? You certainly may. All right, I'll assist. Okay, and I will buy an extra die just for fun. Okay. Very nice. You get three successes by yourself and another two, which means uh, you are now capped on momentum. And yeah, uh, Zarya, if you can now roll me a, what is that? So six challenge die, please. I think we could spend a momentum, one of the ones we earned, to ignore the resistance, right? You can indeed. Uh, it is one point of momentum to ignore two points of resistance. And it is that also... That might be a good idea. Uh, yeah, and it's also one momentum if you wanted to reroll those three zeros. Let's do both of those. Why not? All right. We have it. Might as well. We're like momentum generating machines right now. Mm-hmm. All right. I just so... want to keep writing 500 words a week, and then we'll keep rolling in the momentum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I got to give you some benefit for it. Uh, all right. So five work done uh, does mean that you achieve a breakthrough, uh, which means not only does the magnitude decrease to two, but so does the difficulty. And you're making good progress, Arya. Uh, Riley is chipping in, uh, doing what he can to sort of realign uh, the multispectral analysis waveguide and uh, you know you're you're starting to get bits and pieces of a phonetic language that are coming through the universal translator um, um, but yeah you are currently quick, at the following uh, quick point uh, I think you've clicked on the journal on your roll 20 because the rolls aren't coming up on the stream are they Oh, you're, you're right. I did click on the journal. Thank you for catching that. There we go. No problem. Uh, thanks, Prayer. Love you. Yes, thank you, Prayer. And I'll even scroll up so you can see how well they did. But yeah, uh, same rolls. Uh, just the difficulty, I guess, now for Zarya is a one. And roll again, and there we go. All right. All right. And you're capped on momentum. Does the ship get you any? Who's got the ship? The ship already rolled. Oh, wait. This is the second roll. Yeah, this My is bad. the second roll. Yep. My bad. Uh, working on it. Comes. Engineering. Focus. Hiya. Man, the ship does not want to assist you today. The ship doesn't like doesn't like comms. It no, really doesn't. It's the, it really doesn't. It's the cat. It's the cat. It's the cat's fault. <laughs> it's the cat. Was it a black cat? It was indeed. It was a black cat. A big old black uh, Maine Coon. There's the point. There's mm. the reason. All right. Uh, so yeah, you're back, uh, Captain Momentum and Zarya. Again, if you could roll me a six challenge die, please. And let's just re-roll those, because we are rolling in the momentum. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay. Uh, would you like to spend? Uh, let me check a look at what you got right now. Uh, so you would be at nine work done. Uh, I will say if you spend one momentum to get rid of the resistance, uh, you would go up to 10. And then if you spent two more uh, momentum after that, you would completely complete the work track, which would then complete the extended task. Do you guys want to do that? I've been rolling pretty good on that task, so if we just want to go for the task again. Um, I say why not? Yeah, why not? Why not in which direction? Yes. Gotta, gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this means, so I'm just gonna put them out. No, right. uh... No? no? I, 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 go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I, I think the momentum are on the table, so that's what we'll go yeah, There you go, <laughs> go ahead bye. and spend momentum. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, Zarya, you, you have a sudden inspiration breakthrough, and uh, not only are you able to uh, sort of get the Universal Translator properly working, but you also are able to establish a visual contact uh, with the alien ship. And uh, as visual contact is, a, uh, is established, uh, appearing on the screen is a purple-skinned individual. Uh, they are humanoid, and they appear to have these sort of white bioluminescent lines almost in patterns throughout their skin. Uh, as you can see on the token, or if you can't see in the token, uh, they have these almost like feather-like ears. They're like big old, uh, almost feathery type things that come up above their head. Um, this particular one uh, is also wearing a see-through shawl with matching black clothing. And uh, the individual uh, says, and you all hear this perfectly fine, Ah, I see we are able to communicate finally. Hello, uh, my name is Fizali. And again, I will type that out so you know how to spell it. Much appreciated. It's always helpful with your names. That's not even close to how I wrote it down. <laughs> I know those pains. Uh, it is uh, good to see you too, uh, Fazali, and it is good to actually hear you and understand um, our communication between each other. Uh, again, I am Commander Zines. This is the USS Akagi. Um... How do how does space fare you today? Well, I did want to apologize. Uh, this is a Allura ship. Uh, I am simply here to see my charge down to the planet. Uh, Warren, come over here, please. And uh, in the background, uh, I'm not going to put the token on because it would be huge. But in the background behind her, you see this very large, uh, almost beetle-like humanoid. Uh, and I use the humanoid term lightly because uh, they have multiple arms. They appear to have some sort of a carapace, uh, <sighs> but they are big old bug type things. And uh, Fazali kind of motions with her hand behind her and she says, uh, this is uh, Warren. He is an Aluras. Uh, I uh, am a Euphem. Uh, again, I apologize. Uh, were circumstances different, I would have come on one of our ships rather than one of Warren's. Uh, very well. Uh, both of your species are uh, new to us. Um, what, uh, what business do you do either one of you have on this planet? You said you're bringing him here as a charge. Uh, yes. Uh, not to be rude, or at least I, I hope it's not uh, coming across as such, Perhaps it would be best if we talked actually in person. Uh, yes, of course. Um, well, uh, you are welcome uh, to come aboard the Akagi unless you would like to meet on the planet. There is a sound, uh, almost like a, a hiss coming from Warren behind her. And uh, Fizali kind of does tilt her head slightly, ears sort of doing that uh, dog thing where they perk up a little bit. And uh, after a moment, she says, I believe perhaps we should meet on your ship first. 
Uh, if you will send coordinates for a docking port, uh, we will come over. Uh, of course. Um, I will I will have that sent over, and I look forward to meeting you. Ah, very nice to meet you as well, and I will see you shortly. And the screen cuts out. And Zines will turn to Fredrickson and Zarya. Uh, Fredrickson, um, send them over um, the coordinates for uh, Shuttle Bay 1. And Commander, could you pick up what that hiss, or would you fair a guess at what that hiss from her charge was for? Typically speaking, if people hiss in my culture, it's not a good thing. Understandable, Commander. Um, I'm not sure, but I can take a look over the recording again and see if maybe the Universal Translator would make anything of it. We might not have enough data on his language to be able to decode it, but it's worth a try. Of course, it's always worth a try. Uh, worst that can happen is we're in the same boat we're in now. Um, and uh, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you meet me at uh, Shuttle Bay 1, and we'll, I guess, handle first contact? Understood. Um, and Mr. Riley, uh, whatever this cat problem you think you have, can oh, you... Oh, no, it, no, no, don't worry about it. No, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, I was just going to ask you to handle it. <laughs> did, um, this is out of character, did... Did you say that chip warped into the system? It did, yes. Okay, cool. Um, I think R Riley would like to stay on the bridge and uh, just get a better look at that ship because he loves, he, he grew up obsessed with ship design and, and it's, a, it's a unique ship. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like a plan. Um, Commander Riley, you have the bridge while I'm gone? Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, before I put us on Theater of the Mind, uh, Zarya, did you want to try and run that through the Universal Translator? Yep. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of thread here. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty four uh, insight, and for you, I will say an insight medicine, because you're trying to judge both mood, inflection, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the ship will assist you with a communications and science in this aspect. I can roll the ship. I've got it in front of me. Okay. And I'm going to get one extra die. Okay. You said communication science? That is correct. Oh, wow. Zarya is knocking out of the park today. They know that I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So you, uh, you get that momentum back. And yeah, Zarya, uh, what you're able to determine is that the hiss uh, was something along the lines of they're on our planet. Okay, well, that's good to know. I'll definitely relay that to Zines. Um, not necessarily publicizing that so as not to worry the other crewmen, but mm -hmm. it's something we should keep in mind. Okay. Uh, so, that's a good that call. Um, was I part of that, too? Do you uh, want I'm, to be part of that? I'm Are sure that listening? happened before we left the bridge. Yeah. This area of, of space has been claimed by a lot of different people, including the Klingons during the, during the war. So... True. They, um, they could have a, a claim. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to grab a pad and... Mm -hmm. Uh, request all information we have on this colony, how long we've been here, all pretty much every bit of information we have, and start speed reading it as we head down to the shuttle bay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I will kick you guys over to Theater of the Mind. Uh, so what you learn uh, from your speed reading is that pretty much what the governor has told you already uh, the colony has been here for about five years. Uh, they came in on one of those old, almost sleeper ships uh, that they threw, you know, warp two engines on and then shot out this way. Um, so, you know, they landed on the planet. They used their own ship to make a lot of the initial structures. 
but then they uh, sort of, you know, branched out from there, started making their own things. Uh, so it's a, it's a very self-sufficient colony, uh, but at the same time, it is sort of in that sort of formative era of a colony. But that's about all that you have at the moment. And yeah, um, you know, uh, as you guys step into the shuttle bay, a I was muted. Oh, go ahead. Uh, is there anything in the reports from the governor or uh, the colonists about finding structures or uh, ancient habitations or anything of that nature? Uh, no, there does not appear to be any sign of that whatsoever. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, uh, as you step into the shuttle bay, uh, the, uh, well, I guess it would be the uh, Allurus craft has, has uh, entered the shuttle bay. Uh, it's almost like a, a size, like if you took their original ship and shrunk it down to a shuttle. Uh, the big difference is that instead of the uh, primary hull coming from the bottom of the, or from the top of the ring, it's now coming from the bottom. And as it settles into the shuttle bay, uh, like little landing pad feet type things come out and, and stabilize it on the deck. Um, so first, uh, stepping out is, of course, Fizali. And now that she's here, uh, you're able to see that she has on what looks to be almost like a black dress of some sort. Um, you know, it's, it's still modest. Uh, it's still um, otherwise pleasant to the eyes, but... It's not like, say, uh, you know, a, a risque outfit. It's it's very, very modern, if that makes any sense. Um, but stepping out behind her is a very, very, very large individual. Uh, and the token size is more or less correct. So uh, Warren, as you have been told, almost dwarfs uh, everything. In fact, you're, you're trying to figure out how the hell he even fit into that shuttle in the first place. Um, but you see now that, you know, he's got the white carapace. Uh, he's sort of got these red inlays and spaces between the carapace are also red. Uh, he also has almost like this rhino beetle type head. Uh, and yeah, he has got, he's got four arms. And yeah, I think that's about all I can say about Warren. Uh, but they both step out and uh, Fizali looks between the two of you, between Zari and Zines, and goes up to you first commander and extends her hand and says ah mr zines uh, again a pleasure to meet you in person uh and i will shake her hand with kind of a uh a head nod of a bow uh it is good to meet you as well uh again um, i would like to introduce my charge warren and zines will just kind of look up at warren and his antenna will uh give that quizzical kind of stance again and uh, it is nice to meet you too, Warren. There's a, there's a chittering, almost like uh, almost like crickets or uh, some sort of summer bug, if that makes any sense. Uh, but Zarya, since you did succeed so well in the last one, uh, I will say that uh, if you spend me a momentum, I will tell you what he says. Sure thing. All right, so Zarya, you know that Warren just said hello. And he also said, I hope you are not attached to the colony below. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, I'll look to Zarya after he chitters. Commander? Um, uh, hello, Warren. And I'm gonna pass Commander Zines the pad as well so he can see what the output of the universal translator was on it. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, well, um, Warren, uh, we kind of are attached to the colony, seeing as how the colonists down there have been building homes for the past five or so years. Uh, is there territorial dispute? We didn't know about? So Warren uh, almost looks like he's starting to bulk up or put himself in a, in a sort of a peacock stance where he's making himself look bigger. 
Uh, and but then Fazali, before anyone else can react, Fazali reaches out and places a, a delicate hand on his carapace, and, and Warren seems to calm down. Okay, and, and Zines was going to, like, kind of put his hands up, like, no, I, no uh, offense intended. I'm just simply trying to understand the situation that we have here. Um, and this is Fazali. Uh, well, Commander, perhaps uh, we could meet somewhere besides a shuttle bay? Uh, sure. Um, do I think Warren's going to fit through the hallways and to a conference room? It'll be a tight squeeze, but you think he can manage. Hmm. Uh, of, of course, Fazali. Uh, we can meet in one of our conference rooms. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry to Warren. It'll be kind of a squeeze to get through the hallways and the doorways, but... Seeing as how you came out of that shuttle, I think you'll do just fine. If you would follow me. All right. And I'll lead them to one of the conference rooms. Or the dip Yeah, conference rooms, because we don't have diplomatic suites. Right. Okay. So, uh, you head to a briefing room. All right. Let's get your tokens set up, and then I'll adjust it for the stream. All right. So, Fazali's there. Uh, Zarya would be over here. And Warren would more or less take up the space at the end of the table. And yeah, uh, as you step in, uh, Fazali looks around and says, Oh, this is, this is lovely. Much, uh, much more open than I'm used to. Uh, we do like our space. Uh, and um, we have rooms like this just for this sort of situation. Oh. So uh, what can you tell me about... Um, uh, what we know is uh, Colia. Well, uh, and she looks to Warren for a second, and there's the slightest nod of Warren's head. And Fazali smiles and says, Right. Well, uh, Warren's people, the Aluras, and, you know, let me actually type that in chat so you know how to spell it. Uh, uh, the do. Aluras, uh, they come here every 15 years to, I believe the term is metamorphize, or perhaps change in a manner that would be uh, similar if you have any insects on your planet. Um, well, uh, not on mine, but I am... Uh, uh, I have spent time on planets like Earth who have lots and lots and lots of insects. Um, is is this metamorph metamorphosis uh, take up a lot of space? Is it something that we can share this planet? And there is another sort of unspoken conversation as the two look at each other. And again, Fazali nods and says, of course, I will tell him. The Aluras see this place as a special location. They don't exactly revere it, but at the same time, they are very attached to it. They could undergo metamorphosis, uh, metamorphosis uh, really anywhere, but they come here specifically because of their culture. Um, hmm. Uh, and how many at a time uh, come to the planet? Well, uh, I suppose the good news is that it would be only about uh, 10 to 20, of course, including Warren here. Uh, the Aluras are a very, shall we say, they don't have a lot of kids. Uh, meaning there's not that many of them? That is correct. Hmm. Uh, is this because of a cultural, or is that uh, something to do with just their species, or uh, is it like other species that we've heard of that um, uh, one side of the species has dwindled? So this and time... 
you know, mid sentence, Warren does, un, you know, let out a verbal sort of answer. And Zarya, I would like you to roll me an insight uh, medicine, please. Uh, difficulty three here. Um, would I have any applicable focuses for this? Do you have anything related to body language, uh, first contact, or perhaps um, what would be the uh, the proper term for this? Um, I guess people reading. I'll just go with no. Let's see what comes up. Okay. So unfortunately, uh, with two successes, your Universal Translator does not pick that up. Uh, but Fizali again extends uh, her hand and places it very almost calmingly on Warren's shoulder. Well, one of them anyway. And after a moment, Warren uh, settles down and Fizali says, uh, You'll have to excuse Warren. Uh, the Aluren can, or the Allura can be very mm, difficult around the time for them to change. Hmm. That's understandable. Um. If if I can communicate this in in any other way, I I would. But I I'm honestly trying to find a good solution to um to this uh it does warren think that we can cohabitate on this planet well warren is of the mind that perhaps you should have asked first and i won't repeat some of his more colorful comments but the general feeling that he would like me to convey is that he is not very happy and that if he is not happy, then it is likely others of his kind will not be happy. Well, other than removing our colonists, how else can we help him be happier? Vizali looks at Warren, and they look at each other for, you know, maybe about 30 seconds just in silence. And then Fazali nods again and says... I think it would be best if I gave you some time to confer with whoever runs the colony. Uh, long story short, we will need access to the following coordinates. And, you know, she slides over a, a data unit, uh, which should interface with your computers no problem now that you've fixed the translator. Um, we will need access to these coordinates. Uh, this will also give me time to confer with Warren and perhaps better get a feel for his thoughts. Uh, are there quarters or perhaps somewhere we could uh, wait while you talk with the governor? Um, of course. Uh, you can stay in this room if you would like, or I can make uh, more comfortable quarters available to you if, uh, if that would be uh, better for you. And Warren almost answers for you by sitting down on the floor. Wonderful. Um, please do let me know if there's anything we can do about the um, uh, life support or temperature or anything of that nature and to help you be more comfortable and at home. Of course, and thank you for meeting with us. Of course. This is the prime nature of um, of our Federation. Uh, please, uh, let me, excuse me, and let, uh, Commander Zari and I go talk with the governor and, um, get, get this squared away. Of course. And, and as soon as we walk out the door, I know this is what's going to happen. I'm going to look at this pad, look at our pad, and realize that the coordinates I need access to are the exact coordinates that the colony ship is sitting on. Yep. Of course. You know, sometimes I feel like staying on Andoria and dealing with the ice is much easier than being out here. We might be able to figure something out. We should at least go talk to the colony, see what mm. they have to say about this. Of course. We definitely need to talk to them. Uh, remind me to kick Miller when he's better about leaving this in my lap. Um, and I will head back to the bridge to 
uh, talk with the governor. Alrighty. So, uh, while they were gone, uh, Riley, uh, you are detecting that there is, uh, on long-range sensors anyway, uh, there does appear to be some increased uh, activity coming from the Hiromi cluster. Hiromi yeah. cluster. Um, it's not exactly ship movement per se, but you're definitely detecting increased emissions coming from that area. Hmm. Would the Akagi be able to scan to see if we can get a better picture of that? You certainly may. Uh, this will be... Uh, I think Cerul would be the best for us, so if someone would uh, like to pop up Cerul's sheet, uh, this is going to be for Cerul, a reason science. Uh, the Akagi will assist with a sensor science, and after accounting for advanced sensors, the difficulty will be a 2. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, handle the ship. All right, well, Sir Wool gets the, you the two you need already. Man, the Akagi just does not want to help today. All right. Akagi, please. I know, right? Uh, so Sir Rool says, uh, well, sir, I have run it through this, the lateral sensor array, and it does appear that uh, one of the stars in the area uh, has gotten caught up in the orbit of another. Uh, they're forming what is known as a, a graviton, sir. Is that going to be? That's what uh, it's called. <laughs> Are we in any danger, or any of the colonies in this area? Ah, uh, no, sir. It's just that uh, we will be uh, able to see this uh, particle emission from quite a distance away. Should not hamper. Uh, should not hamper any ship operations, sir. And I don't think it will really be a problem. Uh, ah, no, it is called a magnetar. That's what it's called. A magnetar. Uh and uh, she goes on to say, normally, sir, uh, this happens, the, a magnetar happens when uh, two neutron stars smash together uh, and they start to spin very rapidly and become very, very magnetic. Um, again, we're, we're far enough out that it's, it's not a problem, but, you know, any, any planet in that general area probably is getting a very high dose of uh, magnetic storms at the moment. Is that going to interfere with our sensors in case anything... This is me being paranoid. If something comes from that direction, maybe it could hide their, their warp signatures? Oh, that's a good point, sir. Uh, yes, unfortunately, I believe that uh, anything coming from that direction would be harder to see uh, based on the, magnet uh, the magneticism that is coming from that area. Uh, we could attempt a more unconventional approach to usage of the sensors, but... Uh, there are the possibilities that we will still miss them. Did that ship, and Riley points to the view screen where the the ship is still sitting there, mm -hmm. um, did that ship come from that direction? Uh, I believe so, sir, yes. Hmm. Sometimes it's good to be paranoid. Do you think if we launched probes, we could somehow offset the flood of radiation and the interference to our sensors? Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt, sir. Uh, I, it'll take me a little bit to configure the probe, but I can certainly launch it when ready. Get on it. All right. And it's about then that Zines and Zara, you guys arrive back on the bridge. I, uh, Riley never actually sat in the chair. He kind of, like, stood behind it with his hands on the back of the chair. So he, he backs off and gives Zines the space to take the chair. Uh, and Zines will sit in the offered chair. Uh, Mr. Riley, uh, any, uh, anything happened while we were gone? Well, you came just a few seconds after uh, this conversation ended, but uh, there seems to be some sort of uh, magnetar happening uh, in the Hiromi cluster. And it appears that the this ship came from that direction. And I'm just being paranoid, but I want to make sure that we know if anything else comes from there. So 
And since the rule is going to uh, get a probe prepared, we're going to launch it in that direction so we can keep a better eye on it. That's certainly an interesting coincidence. I hate coincidences. Uh, good work, uh, Commander Riley. You two instance rule. Uh, keep me apprised of any anything that pops up on that uh, probe sensors. Um, Commander Riley, this uh, magnetar shouldn't um, affect us this far out, should it? The ensign said we should be fine. Uh, stellar phenomenon are not really my thing. Um, just in case, maybe you and your engineer should uh, um, just make sure that everything is um, tightened down and tuned up, if you know what I mean. Can do, sir. And uh, Riley will get off the bridge and start getting a team ready to, to essentially go over everything. All right. And uh, Zines will swivel in a chair over to Fredrickson. Uh, Ensign, can you bring the uh, governor up on the screen? I'm about to have a conversation that neither one of us really wants to have. Yes, sir. Give me a moment. And appearing on screen is one Governor Martin. The governor says, ah, yes, uh, hello, Akagi. Uh, I take it you are to thank for whatever's going on up there. Uh, yes. Um, we have met with the, uh, the people of the ship and have spoken with them, and I have somewhat not-so-great news. Uh, they are not hostile, but... Uh, it seems that this planet that uh, you were currently on that was chosen for colonization by us uh, is actually claimed by someone else. Another species uses this planet as a grounds for metamorphosis in the insect way of saying that. This is fascinating, Commander, but... I mean, we, we've put in five long and hard years here. It, we're not about to give up our home. Well, I have kind of talked to uh, the representatives of these people, and they are open to the idea of cohabitation. Unfortunately, um, as coincidences happen, uh, the land that they actually really want over anything else is right where the colony ship set down. And Martin's face falls a little bit, but it also gets a little more serious and he says, that area is our main power plant now. Uh, perhaps it's best if I show you. And uh, he pushes a button and on the view screen, uh, you see a live camera feed of Kyola Colony. Uh, and it is uh, very similar to how Mars Colony probably looked uh, many, many years ago. Uh, basically a desert with these sort of big old solar panel farms in the background, uh, these sort of sealed uh, facilities that are built into a, a plateau, and then a bunch of vehicles running around in between the facilities. Um, there's also probably something more advanced in the radar dishes that are on this image. Uh, but in general, uh, it looks like a colony that has just gotten its foothold. Uh, and, uh, the governor goes on to say, it took us the better part of two years to get all of this up and running. And, uh, in order to allow this species, individual, whatever, uh, access to, the coordinates you've provided, we would have to redesign quite a large amount of the facility, or at least move our main power generator somewhere else. We don't really have security here, sir. Uh, best we have are a few people trained in uh, pistol shooting, but it's it's not like we've got Starfleet security here. Uh, I I can understand that situation, Governor. Um. How difficult would it be to move um, these items or uh, 
equipment from the coordinates that I gave you, say if uh, we were to help with transporters or uh, I'd hate to try doing it with tractor beams, but um, is, is that something that you and your engineers or possibly uh, I can send down my chief engineer to um, see if that's something we can possibly handle? Well, uh, of course you're free to send down your chief engineer, but the location you're speaking of is quite literally at the heart of our facility. It is beneath uh, a rather large amount of tonnage of rock and dust and other particulate. Uh, to try and remove it or otherwise move it somewhere else would be a mon monumental undertaking. We're probably on the scale of half a year to a year if only because of, well, if we're not careful we lose our main power source understood um let me continue to work this problem from my end and i will get back to you uh very good uh and if you ever need a representative for the colony uh i would be happy to come up myself uh understood uh if it comes to that i will um hmm Matter of fact, why not? Um, can you? Do you happen to have a transporter pad or somewhere open that we can uh, bring you up from? I believe we can make some arrangements. Wonderful. Um, then uh, please let me know when you're ready to come up, and uh, we will handle introductions. That is acceptable. I will see you momentarily. Akagi up. Yep. Um, and up. I'm going to turn to Fredrickson again. Fredrickson, uh, I seem to be making you work overtime. Uh, can you send a message to um, Starfleet Command, specifically the Diplomatic Corps, and ask them for any kind of um, assistance or ideas to help us with our current dilemma i can do that sir but uh based on my experience with the diplomatic corps that could take a few days or perhaps a week um all right uh then go ahead and do it as well as send a message to starfleet command about this as well aye sir all right commander zarya let's uh Go meet this governor and handle introductions. All right. So uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity to take our five to ten minute break. So uh, BRB in about five to ten minutes, guys.
All right, and we're back from break a little bit early. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, not to cut the scene short, but we're just going to go ahead and jump into the briefing room where uh, the governor and the, your other guests have been assembled. And we'll say, for sake of argument, uh, Warren has not moved from where he sat down. Uh, Fazali is still in her chair, and... Governor Martin, uh, when he walks in, he takes a seat nearest to you all and uh, kind of looks to you all, as does Fazali, for you to, uh, quote-unquote, run the meeting. Uh, Fazali, uh, Warren, uh, let me introduce uh, Governor Martin, the head of the colony that is down on the planet. Um, I felt the need that bringing him up here uh, so the three of you with us acting as host and guest mediary, um, could possibly work out a solution to our current problem. So there is a pause as Fazali kind of studies Martin and, uh, Zarya, I'd like you to roll me, uh, Insight Con, please. Uh, or maybe Insight Medicine, if you have a focus related to... Again, body language or uh, people reading. Uh, the difficulty here is going to be a four, though. Okay. Um, I don't want to just go for it straight up, but we do have one momentum with us. Mm -hmm. So I'll spend that. Do we want to bet on three, or...? Uh, I mean, we can... You can give threat to get another dice. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna see if this works. Okay. That's I think it would be two, because she already took it one, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, just... No applicable focus. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh... That couldn't have gone worse. Well, it could have gone worse. So here's what I'll say. You know, you, you've you only met the Euphem, the species of Fazali. You've only met the Euphem very briefly. You haven't really gotten a, a good hold of their culture. But, you know, based on other humanoids you've encountered in your travels and your career with Starfleet, one of three possibilities is happening. One, Fazali is looking like she's sizing up a meal. Uh, I mean that in the literal sense. The second, she's sizing up a meal in the phrasing sense. And the third is that she is tremendously pissed for some reason. It could be one of those three. You have no idea which. I mean, all three of those sound terrible. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not very happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fazali, is there a problem? Ah, no, my apologies. I simply did not, uh... What is your species? And she motions at Martin, and Martin says, uh, I am a human. Uh, I'm sure you already know that Zines here is an Dorian, and, uh, Zarya here is, uh, a Denobulan. And, uh, Fizali just sort of bats her eyes a little bit and says, Ah! Well, perhaps we should get down to brass tacks. Okay. Well, they look at you again for, uh, since this appears to be your meeting to run. Uh, okay. Um, uh, well, I have spoken with the governor about, um, the coordinates that you gave me. Um, and unfortunately, right now there is about, uh, well, let's just say there is a lot of equipment and rock currently on that location. Um, that would unfortunately make it very difficult to move the equipment and the people that are at those coordinates. Uh, which is why I wanted to bring the governor up here so we can work, we can find a solution to this. Warren starts to stand up, but all it takes is another well-placed hand for Fazali to get him to stay seated. And Fazali says... 
I see. Well, in the interest of keeping the peace, I will say that, again, it's not a preferable outcome, but it is possible for the Allura to metamorphosize anywhere they like. Uh, but I'm sure that we are just the first of many that will come. Is the coordinates you gave me uh, Warren's chosen place, or is that the place for every uh, Allurus uh, will want to be at? So Fazali looks over at Warren. Warren nods his head, and Fazali replies, That is Warren's chosen location. Now, my understanding, I mean, of course, our two people, and she motions at Warren and herself, and she says, Our two people are connected culturally, but there are still things that are best reserved for one's charge and one's mentor. I believe it is possible for me to say that while this is Warren's location, it could possibly be many others. Interesting. And other charges and mentors may not be as uh, even-tempered as yourselves to want to meet and talk. That's a very nice way of putting it. So, yes, let's go with that. Is there any place on the planet that you would think or know of that uh, the Allurus would not want to choose? Zarya, I'd like you to roll me another insight medicine, please. The difficulty here will be a three. This time you're studying the governor. Okay. Um... I'm going to give you one threat just to buy one dice and give me the best chance at this. Okay. Let's see if it works. It does. It works. So, Martin looks like he's torn. On the one hand, he's trying to be nice. And on the other hand, he has very strong feelings about his colony. Um, but there's also something else there that you're not quite able to put your finger on. You know, it's it's something that he's holding back, if that makes any sense. There's something that he's... Understandable. Yeah, there's something he's deliberately not saying. Um, but Martin is able to reply first to this, and the governor says, The problem I see, uh, Commander and Fizali and Warren... Um, the problem I see is that even if we are able to make an accommodation for Warren, if the location changes based on the pairing, we can't, you know, we can't open up the entire colony as, as much as I would like to. I mean, it would be a very monumental undertaking to make the colony, well, the emotions at Warren you would have a very, very hard time uh, getting through our facilities, uh, especially if you have problems here. Unfortunately, according to the Federation logs on the colony, it didn't seem like when they arrived here that there was any you know, sign that this place was being used. Which I think is why there's this difficulty now between our two peoples. Um, perhaps there's some sort of compromise we can come to. We could perhaps set aside part of the planet reserved for this use and part of the planet reserved for the use of the colony. Is this something that people might be willing to consider? Let's see. Uh, why don't you roll me a presence command or a presence medicine because you're the ship's counselor. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember what the ship's counselor focus gives you. Or not focus. Uh, roll gives you. Let's see. Page one. Oh, I, I could have definitely used this before. <laughs> I could have used that like twice already. Oh, 
Well, uh, I will say you can ask me the question about Martin, but not Fazali. That's fair. Um, how about why is Martin up? Set like it can i tell anything about why he's holding back if it's something personal or not oh it's very personal and okay y- you've seen this before because the dilated pupils the slight sweat across his brow uh that sort of nervousness like you can hear very faintly the rumble of his stomach mm-hmm. uh this man is experiencing a love at first sight scenario oh uh, okay um I'm not necessarily going to share that with the group, mm-hmm. but I'll keep that to myself for now. All right. It's interesting. So, uh, the task uh, will be a uh, presence, we'll say presence medicine, because we'll play to your strength. Uh, a presence medicine, uh, the difficulty will be a three. Uh, however, I am going to spend some threat here to increase the complication range to a 17 to a 20. Sure, and what is this in reference to? This is in reference to you saying, hey, let's come together, let's make a compromise. You know, how well is that coming across, sort of a thing. Because remember, you know, you've just met these, the, both these species. You know, maybe what you think is a compromise might not be their compromise. It, it's how well you're relaying this information. I'm clicking all the wrong things. Would this be determination uh, worthy? Oh, true, true. Yeah, because your determination will get you two automatic successes. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting about that. And I'm sure you have a value that would probably. Uh, I do to. have a value for that. Can I <laughs> can I use my determination with the value always look for the silver lining? I will let that happen. Yeah, that's a perfect value for this instance. Awesome. So how should I roll that? Do I just roll it normally and we count it as having the extra? Yep. Okay, cool. Presence well, that's four. That's four. And that is all you need. So you get a momentum. So, uh, luckily, the Universal Translator does its job, and your body language also helps with this, but uh, both Fazali and uh, the governor look at each other and say, yeah, well, the Martin, or Governor Martin speaks first, and he says, perhaps there is something we could do. Um, we could certainly uh, clear out the area uh, for Warren here. Uh, it would be... Uh, Right in between some rather loud equipment, if he doesn't mind that. And Fazali uh, looks to Warren, and Warren almost shrugs. And uh, Fazali says, I believe that will work. Uh, however, this does not fix the larger problem that I believe we have on our hands here. Perhaps you could provide me a map of the colony. And uh, Martin sort of looks to Zines for permission to, you know, put it up on that little hollow display on the middle of the table. Uh, yeah, uh, Zines will unlock it so he can. Okay. So he puts up a, a hollow image of the colony and uh, the two study it for a bit, you know, pointing at areas like, will this work? Oh, no, that won't work. What about here? You know, sort of that back and forth. And uh, as this is going on, uh, Zines, are you allergic to cats? <sighs> yes. Well, there is a big old black cat that has somehow started just rubbing against your legs and purring. What? <laughs> oh, this isn't good. Um... Uh, Commander Zarya, can you finish handling this <laughs> for a second? Of, of course, of course, Commander. And I'll 
try to pick up the cat and bring it to the hallway. Okay. And just Zines drop will, it outside the door. Zines will walk to the door, and as soon as he gets out of the door, he hits his comm badge. Riley, I thought you had <laughs> this cat thing under control. And then he'll leave the room. Okay. And Zarya will go back down and sit down again. Sorry for the intrusion. Oh. This is another species from uh, Earth that has decided to cohabitate with us for the time being. And uh, Martin kind of looks at it almost uh, almost like he was enamored with his work in working with Fazali and says, Oh, it's, it's a cat. Yep. Uh, Commander Riley seems to have found a cat today in engineering. So um, he's been exploring the ship and getting his bearings around here. And Riley, Commander it's, Zines should be back soon. I would say, Riley, it's right about then that you run into Commander Zines in the hallway. And Zines is like... <sighs> I swear, Commander, I told Crewman Mendoza, keep a hold of this guy. Or girl. I don't, he never gave me an update on, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, Crewman Mendoza was supposed to keep this cat under control. Where is he? Mendoza or the cat? The cat. I don't care about Mendoza right now. It's, uh, it's in the conference room. I think Zarya has it contained for now. I dropped it outside in the hallway. Uh, never mind. It's running that way. And um, I go after it. And and he Zines will yell down the hallway and tell Mendoza he's scrubbing uh, shuttle bay one with the smallest brush he can find. And I yell, "Gotcha, Commander!" <laughs> and Zines will. <clears throat> probably sneeze one or two more times, clear his throat, and then walk back into the room. Gotcha. So, uh, in the time you were gone, Zines, uh, the governor and Fazali have actually reached some form of a compromise. Um, again, they will, uh, at least the colonists, will make the space available to Warren, and uh, they are starting to get into the talks of... Uh, whether or not uh, it would be prudent or acceptable to actually uh, work with the Ufim and the Allura to, uh, you know, set up a cohabitation type scenario. It's, it's quite literally the best possible scenario that is unfolding in front of Zarya and Zines. Um, however, Commander Zines, uh, I would like you to roll me an insight and command, please. Uh, difficulty three. And again, if you have people reading or body language, anything of that nature. Uh, closest things I would have, survival is a very, very, very long shot, but teaching? Uh, no, I, 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 well, tell okay. me how you would be using teaching. Uh, being able to read a classroom and know when people are distracted from their actual work by, let's say, somebody in the classroom that they're enamored with. Yeah, I will say that applies. Um, and you said insight and command? Correct. Yikes. Uh, mm, yeah, I'll spend the momentum. Why not? And you said difficulty two? Difficulty three. Ouch. Yeah. Almost. Uh, let's check that zero. Okay. I'll say this can succeed at cost, but I am going to make a complication for it. Sure. Okay. So, uh, your descriptor of, you know, people in classroom, you know, enamored with one another, they don't really get work done. That's kind of what's happening between Martin and Fazali at the moment. Sure, they're talking and they're getting along, but it's pretty damn clear... They both are totally into each other. Um, I'll look to Warren and just kind of give him a look and 
move my antenna to a um, uh, like a stance of like uh, I don't know how to put it, but like I'm trying to give them the body language of uh, maybe we should get them back on track, and then I'll kind of glance between Martin and Fazali mm -hmm. and see if he picks up on it. So Warren lets out a, almost like a cough or a bark, and Fazali uh, starts and uh, blinks a, a few bit, uh, blinks for a little bit, and says, "Ah, sorry, uh, we were getting and, off track." Uh, Go Governor, can we? Uh, um, I I very much appreciate the fact that we are talking very calmly and politely, but can we get back to the uh, the matter at hand uh, of the situation? Ah, well, uh, of course. Um, Honestly, I, I think we have at least this situation covered. Um, until other Fazal or sorry, other Euphem arrive, and other Allura, uh, it's uh, it's going to be difficult to to determine the scope of this problem. Uh, I, again, uh, I we're not technically uh, you know, under the purview of Starfleet, but you know, there is sort of the Federation Charter to consider and. You know, getting along with uh, other species is kind of what we are out here to do. Uh, it, it'll be difficult, but I think it can happen, yes. Wonderful. Um, and perhaps, um, Fazali, you could... Uh maybe help with this help the good governor here with this matter and possibly send along a message to let other um uh euphemes and uh Eulurus that uh we are very much open to communication and um helping both sides of this problem i can do that immediately um yes let's let me go do that from my shuttle uh, if you will excuse me. Of and course. Uh, she gets up and leaves and, the room. And Zines will stand, as I'm sure Governor Martin will too, when she gets up to leave. Mm hmm. And then I'll just look at Warren and tilt my head to the side and kind of give him a little bit of a smile. And of course, after a moment, Governor Martin claims he has to use the restroom. We all know he's not needing to use the restroom, but he excuses himself. <laughs> Leaving you in the room alone with Warren. And, uh, you know, Zarya and Zines, you're kind of staring at Warren. And then, quite inexplicably, Warren says, Relationships are weird. <laughs> Zines just kind of nods, yes. Yes, they are. You... Yep. I'm, I'm sure you also know that they are um, probably not going to communicate with their people or use the refresher. And he just looks at Warren and blinks a few times. And uh, maybe I should specify, he spoke in uh, what would be Federation Common, so English. Yeah, Zine's not surprised. At all. At all. I've seen this movie before. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, picking up on that, and then he looks at Warren care to explain the mentor and charge um, dynamic between you and uh, Fazali? The Euphem are smarter than us. We are a simple people. They help us learn. Hmm. Well, hopefully we can all learn to live peacefully on this planet and stay out of each other's way as well as help each other prosper. And he just repeats himself, relationships are weird. They are. They really are. Very Especially true. what... What was that? I said very true. Are all so, humans like this? In your experience, Commander Zines? Yes. Okay. Good Pink skins know. are weird. 
when it comes to finding someone that they find physically appealing. You should see Captain Miller when he has had a few drinks and is playing whatever that game the Ferengi like playing. Good to know. So how long should we give them before we go and break up their meeting? Warren just shrugs. Relationships are weird. Got it. <laughs> oh, and I think that's a very uh, light-hearted way, uh, actually, to uh, wrap up the session. Because I think the, the main conflict is over. You guys have reached a happy conclusion. And in the spirit of TOS, uh, you found <laughs> love. Well, you not you specifically, but other people they have found, found love. love. Uh, all I right. Have, I have a question. I might have an answer. Is the main conflict really over, though? Because there's still a cat roaming around this ship. Well, you know, it's <laughs> something you're I, probably going to have to talk to the captain about when uh, when he's back. I, I'm taking I, a I, poll in Twitch for names, so don't worry. We'll have a name by next time. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I mean, if I had if I had another scene with the cat, I already had a name for it. I I'm also but that's probably um, better. Going to be going to doc Dr. Jensen, and if if this cat's going to stay on board. He needs to find a way of me not sneezing repeatedly whenever the cat's around. <laughs> I love it. All right. So uh, players stick around for a little bit longer, but this is where I will cut the stream. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see these guys in two weeks. Bye-bye, stream.